Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here, back after a pretty long break. Today I'm going to be doing something people have asked me to do a bunch, and I don't think I've ever actually done, which is play Tainted Pact and Timeless. Um, so I've made a ton of videos where I did the Tainted Pact, Jace, uh, Mysterious Welder combo. In Timeless you can do it in its better form, where you combine it with Thassa's Oracle and Tainted Pact, and this is a lot better in uh, two ways. One is that it, it Thassa's Oracle is just a cheaper card, so you know you can win on turn three if you just have both both of these cards in your hand. At the end of your opponent's second turn, you can just Tainted Pact away your deck and then untap and play Thassa's Oracle, and so it's less mana. And then also Thassa's Oracle is way harder for people to disrupt. If you watched a bunch of my Jace historic time Tainted Pact decks. Uh, if you watch those videos, a lot of the times when I'm playing, I'm trying to l figure out, you know, how are people going to be able to interact with my Jace? How can I beat their interaction? Thassa's Oracle, there's a lot less opportunity to, for people to interact because even if they kill the Oracle with the trigger on the stack, as long as you have a completely empty library, you win the game. So in general, if you get to cast Tainted Pact and you get to resolve Thassa's Oracle, you're just going to win. Um, the only ways that people can really stop you are stifle type effects. So stifle and consigned to memory um, are, are like the two main things that can go wrong. It, it's much, much safer against most decks to combo this way than it is with a Jace Mysterious Welder. Uh, a couple other things that are different in Timeless. So Luris is legal. Um, there are some cards that would be somewhat appealing to play if you weren't going to use Luris, like Narset's pretty good. You could play one Jace Mysterious Welder uh, to give you another way to combo, although it's a little bit tricky because if you had just the one Jace in your deck, you wouldn't be able to taint it packed away your deck when you drew the Jace because you'd have two Thassa's Oracles. But it still might be worth uh, trying to play a Jace. But the thing with Luris is, even though this is not a particularly good Luris deck, it's still just a free card. And it is a free card that, even though you don't have a ton of things to bring back with Luris, you can bring back Thassa's Oracle, which is, you know, your main way to win. Um, I also have a Mishra's Bauble in my deck and a Soul Guide Lantern to bring back. As long as... Uh, and Snapcaster Mage. And then also I have what's probably the best card in Timeless, which is Orcish Bowmasters. Um, I, I think... Whereas in Historic, I think that uh, the Tainted Pack decks are quite good, and I've played it many times when I was like trying to play the best possible deck, uh, and I thought that it was a good choice. I think in Timeless, the fact that so many people can play four Orcish Bowmasters and it's quite good against this deck, it really makes this deck uh, not quite as strong. And while you don't, you know, you don't need to draw a card for your core combo to win. Just all of the things you want to do to try to set up your two-card combo are, th like, a lot of them are things that are just going to trigger your opponent's Bowmasters. Also, the fact that Bowmasters is so good means that you just play against a lot of black decks, which means you play against just a ton of copies of Thoughtseize and Duress and cards like that, which makes trying to win through a two-card combo harder than it would be in a format where there's less incentive to just play black. Um, so if you look at a lot of my card decisions, like I have main deck Stern Scolding and Spell Snare, which I think that I've started doing that in Historic. These are just good cards, but you, you have to have answers to Bowmasters just because it, it kills you so fast if you have a deck that has a bunch of things that trigger it. Like you, you're, you can't just not cast your spells to prevent the Bowmaster from triggering because that's kind of all your deck is set up to do. Uh, you do get to play with really good permission in... Timeless, so I've got Mana Drain and Counterspell. And Memory Lapse, which is not nearly as good as those other two, but i still got it in my deck. Um, and then I'm playing both Delve cards, even though Treasure Cruise does play, like, right into Orcish Bowmasters, but it's good against Thoughtseize, so it kind of cuts both ways against Black decks. The thing is, you get to play with Fetch Lands. So I've got Polluted Delta, Scalding Tarn, Rainforest, Marsh Flats, Flooded Strand... I even fa have Fabled Passage in my deck just because it fuels the uh, Dig Through Time Treasure Cruise. And then I also have Prismatic Vista, obviously. It's just a better Fabled Passage and Bloodstained Mire. So the mana in this deck is really good. You don't have to get triple blue like you would in Timeless. Um, 
there's do I even have any double black cards in my main deck? No, I don't. I guess Loris is double black. And I have Dismember, which you might need double black for. And then I have Path of Peril and Damnation in my sideboard. So a little bit of double black. Um, but you get really good mana in this. Other than that, not too many differences between this and Historic. Sideboard's pretty different because there's a lot of different stuff you want to be prepared for. Um... Consigned to Memory is really good against this deck. And it's just like generally a good sideboard card in, in spots where people can play a lot of combos. Um, Disruptor Flute's pretty funny in Timeless because if someone tries to cast Necropotence and you respond by flashing in Disruptor Flute, it's just great. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. I also have Pithing Needle because it's, it's pretty good against Necropotence. Um, and there's probably other uses for it. Vexing Bauble is good against people who are trying to show and tell into play and omniscience. Um, so that's where I like that. And then the other cards are just generally good for the most part. So let's play some games. I'll probably get some interesting matchups and we'll see how it goes. I am the person with the Bowmasters. It always feels so good to draw the one of Bowmasters in this deck, because you only have the one. Mana's a little bit awkward. I'm going to have to play a tap land on the first turn. This deck has very few tap lands. When I was, right before I made this video, I was going through and checking to see if there was any uh, newer cards that I might have missed, which it's, it's always a risk that I've missed some newer cards. But I didn't have the blue-black verge in my list, and I actually wound up cutting Fetid Pool for it, which is kind of crazy. Um, I don't even have the fetchable blue black dual land that cycles just because you, you don't you just don't have to play tap land basically. Oh, this is another one that I forgot. Is uh this is another strong addition to the timeless tainted pact list. The fact that you actually get to play with demonic tutor is a pretty big game. I don't know what my opponent's up to over here. You can play all the best cards imaginable on Arena, and they've got Blood Tithe Harvester in their deck. I think if they attack with the Harvester, I'm going to just flash in the Bowmaster and... go to kill it. it. Means I won't have access to Memory Lapse. What does this thing do? We'll slightly change our plans, I guess. This isn't that exciting with an exchange, because if you think about it, I'm basically trading my whole Bowmaster for their whole Blood Tithe Harvester. I mean, I do get the trigger from the... What's this thing called? It's a Kenzen Smelter. going to be one of those games where I have to Demonic Tutor for a land. Uh, I guess we'll slow them down. I could seek new knowledge here, and if I wind up getting either Tainted Pact or Thassa's Oracle, I could Demonic Tutor for the other half and then be able to combo. I think I'm going to go for that, and then if that doesn't work, I might Demonic Tutor for Toxic Deluge.
Or I could also just Demonic Tutor, and then I can snap Demonic Tutor next turn. Cut down. That's not the worst. Because I can Spell Snare the Blood Tithe Harvester. Not close to winning yet, but my opponent's not going to have much going on. Assuming their last card isn't great. Tutor for Tainted Pact and just put Lotus in my hand. Other option would be to opt because if I get a sixth land, then I'll probably be able to win next turn. But I think that this. This doesn't maximize my chances to win next turn, but it, I think it sets me up to win a game where they somehow manage to interact with me, like they top deck Thoughtseize. I don't remember what this does exactly. So if they want, they could just drain me for one. It's kind of funny that I used Demonic Tutor to get Tainted Pact. Like, you would think that this would generally be a downgrade. Apart from you can just get whatever card you want to, to go through, jump through all these hoops to maybe get the card you want. But sometimes what you want is just to not have a deck anymore. really been losing momentum this game cut down's another card that I'm playing just because it can kill Orcus Bowmasters my plan was not to use it to kill Sakens and Smelter but when given the opportunity, that's what I did. Oh, I can't win with an untapped land. I don't know why I said that. With an untapped land, I can snap Demonic Tutor and cast half of my combo. So that doesn't work. Seems like my opponent has given up. I think this is the only tap land that's in my deck now. Well, Fable Passage is kind of a tap land, though. This is. They can put into play St. Alenda, oh, which they didn't have in their hand. Okay. That's nice. 
This may seem like it's not that good of a thing to do if you haven't played this format very much, but it's actually quite strong. And they're going to have a Vein Ripper next turn. I'm going to be under a good amount of pressure to win pretty quickly. This is the thing that I was more worried they would come into play. I'm glad that they kind of did that out of order. Makes me feel like I maybe have a little bit more of a shot. Unfortunate. I can't win on my turn. And they're going to have lethal on their turn. They have an 11 11, so even if I found Toxie's Deluge, I would still. Dead. I don't think there's anything I can do here. So I think I want Pithing Needle and Disruptor Flute because their deck is really dependent on that Soren. Um. We want Damnation as well. Some of the stuff that kills small creatures mostly actually isn't that good, I would say. Although I'm sure they have Bowmaster, so it's probably fine. These are good cards against Bowmasters, but not otherwise. Should have made a note of what the name of that Soren actually is. So I'm going to have to look it up. This is a very strong hand. I'll be able to turn one Inquisition. Them. And the one thing is that if I, in if I Inquisition them, which I think I should do just because I know they have Thoughtseize in their deck, I'm not going to be guaranteed to be able to... win on turn three because I need this Lorien revealed to get me an island their hands terrible though it's good to have that going for me They have so many of this card in their deck. I 
Maybe there's some combo with it that I don't appreciate. They're probably in a lot of trouble now, because even if they've drawn a Thought Seize, I would just tend to pack in response to a Thought Seize, and then they would, wouldn't be able to take both classes or oracles. If they somehow drawn two Thought Seize and, and held one, I would lose. So this is a spot where I want to go down to... I'm going to take the second card from the bottom, leave myself with one card for my draw phase. any I don't think there's any of the cards on arena that can kill a creature for no mana snuff out would be able to do it but I don't think that's available on arena so it probably doesn't really matter that I'm exactly no library when the, the oracle resolves but I'm gonna do it that way This is the card I've rewarded with Stern Scolding. And surprise, it's Thus is one. Maybe I should just have Spell Pierce in my deck. Still haven't seen Bowmasters. They really should have it in their deck. I also have Blood Chief's Thirst in my deck. This is such a bad, like, four mana sorcery speed to kill Soren after it's gotten to be used once. That's really not what I'm going to be about. We'll see what they do with their first turn, but I'm probably going to want to crack Scalding Tarn to get Watery Grave and Thought Seize them. So then I'll have access to Mana Drain on turn two as well. They have the Disruptor Flute technology as well. Disruptor Flute is not nearly as good against my deck as it is against theirs, I would say. Uh, I guess I'm taking the Soren. Are they going to Dark Ritual Thought Sees Me and play the flute? It's all part of a plan. So they've made my Tainted Pact cost five. I don't think it matters 
what I take here. The uh, Soul Guide Lantern is in my deck largely because it's a decent card with Loris. The reason I'm playing with it. Is that a good card? I think it's good enough. Thassa's Oracle. Maybe that was wrong. I don't know. This way, if I draw an untapped fifth land, I can just kill them through the flute. Wait, what's the flute? Yeah, it's three more. I would have been able to set up to kill them. I have Spell Pierce, which covers the Sorin. I was letting that, my guard down with the Archmage's Charm, but they gave up. The Luris Mirror, and I'm on the draw. I think this hand is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's great. Toxic Deluge is probably good against most Luris decks, is kind of what I'm thinking. I don't have this card in my deck. It's a little bit... I can't play as many fetch lands as this person might be playing. I can only have one of each. Like they could easily have twelve fetch lines in their deck if they wanted to. I think I have six or seven. Oh, please don't stifle me or consign to memory me. I forgot that you can do that in this format. I think I also played the wrong fetch land. Because this can get an untapped basic island. I don't think it's going to matter, but it could matter in a different game. I do think I want my third land. Like I said, also, it really matters. Like, if this is a Thassa's Oracle, it matters a lot that I used Misty Rainforest instead of Bloodstained Mire. Probably can't beat them having any sort of counter. So I'm not loving my chances.
Let's see what they do, though. And that's, I'm going to cast either Impulse or Seek New Knowledge. Let's see what they do first, though. I don't really have any cards in my hand that I actively dislike, which made me less keen on casting Seeking Knowledge. Okay. Well, I don't mind that that got countered. I have to do this for six. To be pretty guaranteed to kill the Psychic Frog. I mean, I guess they had a, like a three mana draw two in their hand somehow. Like a frog would live. You lose the life from, from this even if they counter it. So if they can stop this, it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad for me. This might just be them draining me with the shaman on the way out. But if it's like memory lapse or mana drain or anything like that, I'm doomed. It looks like it's mana drain, probably. I want Duress in my deck, I want Mystical Dispute in my deck. I, think I want Path of Peril in my deck. I don't love Cut Down against the Psychic Frog. They're a Bowmaster deck though for sure, so maybe I do want it. I want the lantern. Sheltered's Edict's probably kind of weak. I don't know, it does it is a two mana answer to a psychic frog. I'm not gonna have a ton of stuff in play. Probably I'm gonna take out treasure crews, because I assume that they're gonna have uh Bowmasters, and they also have Deathrite Shamans, so my graveyard's maybe not going to be that juicy. I think I'll board out Mistress Bobble as well, because it's another card that's kind of bad against Bowmasters. I guess this is another tapped land when I was bragging about having so few tapped lands. I wasn't counting this. Definitely wouldn't be able to stern scolding a psychic frog here. If they don't try to cast anything, I'll play the Shielded's Edict. Cameo. A good candidate for stern scolding. We have another land coming to play tapped.
think my plan is to shield to eat them in response to... That doesn't do anything to do in response to the death rich shaman. I should have left the cut down in my deck. I wasn't thinking about Tamiyo. Emery you just probably borderline unplayable in this format. Eat my memory deluge on the way out. Wouldn't say this is going great. Wouldn't say it's going terribly, though. Now I get to see if the Tenure Pact is going to resolve um, well, I get to know the Thassa's Oracle is going to have a trigger before I resolve the Tenure Pact, I guess is the better way to say it. So barring them having some sort of stifle effect, which maybe they could have, this is going to kill them because I'm just going to empty my library. I could keep the absolute last card. I 
If I had played the Tainted Pact first and then went to resolve the Thassa's Oracle, um, and it had turned out that like they had a mana drain or something, then I probably would have just killed myself. Whereas this way, if they had mana drained the Thassa's Oracle, I could just Tainted Pact for an answer to the Psychic Frog. Um, or I could have I probably would have played the Tainted Pact and just gone for a, an answer card. So if this last card is something good, I could I could even stop Consign to Memory. It's not. I don't think there's any cards that could have been that would stop Consign to Memory. I could have maybe hit a card that would stop Stifle. So I do want Cut Down on my deck, and I guess I want Blood Chief's Thirst as well. But all better than Dismember? Probably. Pretty good hand. Brainstorm here, they could have spell pierce. Looks like they have spell pierce. Alright. I don't want to just throw my bowmasters out. If they're brainstorming, I would throw the bowmasters in response. If they're playing a Bowmaster of their own, I'm just going to use my Bowmaster to pick off their Bowmaster rather than play Spell Snare. She's thirsted. I can afford to pay for spell pierce. their top card. isn't going bad.
Hopefully they don't have spell pierce. Wouldn't be a complete disaster, but it would be very nice if they didn't. This is another Bowmaster. I think I'll cast Seek New Knowledge in response to see if I can hit a Mana Drain or a Counterspell. It's a Tap Land. I think I'll just accept that. A little bit weird to be shuffling with Thassa's Oracle, but I think this is a game where I'm just going to win with the Bowmaster now that I have this counter spell. I want to keep the cut down so that I can get the Luris off the board. That winds up getting into play. It was a tough matchup. This hand, it's no good. Much better. I guess I'll just ditch the Soul Gun Lantern. So I'm gonna want to. Well, I'm going to wish that I had gotten rid of. Inquisition of Kozilek, now that they have a turn one ley line. I don't know what kind of deck is going to be playing main deck Leyline of Sanctity. It's a green black deck. They're also playing main deck Thoughtseize, much less strange. Now that they have Lane Line of Sanctity, obviously I'm going to try to seek new knowledge away the Inquisition of Kozilek. It's hard to imagine ever having a card in my hand that's worse than Inquisition of Kozilek. I think I can do this to myself. But I would have no reason to ever want to do that. Not a good card. I think I can do better. That card's not the worst, but... I do think I could do better. It's just so much mana to go and get Tainted Pact. I think Mystical Teachings is legal in uh, on Arena now. It's been printed. But I think it's just... I think it's definitely worse than this card because the option to play this as a land is way better than the option to spend 6 mana to flash it back. This is brutal. I can't get intel on what they've got coming. I have to just get intel on myself. They let him sanctity is a hell of a card. It's good to know I'm getting that tainted pack to come in though. I'm not really sure what my opponent's up to over here. They have to be some sort of control deck, I guess, given that they have this mystic sanctuary.
I guess we'll go with the pile that might contain non-lands. Leland of Sanctity does make Bowmaster a lot less scary. Maybe that's a card I should have in my deck. Or in my sideboard, not in my main deck. It still wouldn't. Just having like a one of lane line in my sideboard is not really going to fundamentally change things all that much. They're assembling the team. So maybe this is a combo deck? Yeah, okay, it is a combo deck. So, if I find a Thassa's Oracle here, I probably show and tell into... I probably just tainted packed away my deck and... get to win. That's not what's happening though. Instead, I'm going to have to put a Gloom Lake Verge into play and try to mana drain whatever their next play is. for me. Now's where it's probably about to get bad. Okay, still not dead. It's not looking good. like having Psychic Frog in this matchup. Just to give me a like a two card something I can just put into plan turn two that is gonna kill them fairly quickly. Let's get rid of all my cards that have to do with creatures. I think I'll still leave Bowmaster in my deck. Definitely want to rest in my deck. Does this do much? I don't think this does anything all that great. I guess it works on their lands. So it's never completely dead. I think I'm just going to cut Shieldred's Edict. Is this a good hand? I guess it's pretty good. They can have Veil of Summer in their deck now, which is a card that I frequently forget exists because it is banned in so many formats.
I think I'm going to set up to try to win quickly. Because of Veil of Summer, I don't want to just sit on the Mana Drain. I'm not going to be able to Tainted Pact and then protect my Thassa's Oracle with Mana Drain. Unless I get an Island, I like an untapped blue from the... Pack. They could have another one of these in their hand. That's enough to go for it now. And if you've been paying attention, you might think, wow, just like Luris has not been useful in uh, any of these games. I think I put it in my hand once and then one before I even cast it. Um, and that's kind of what you should expect. Like, it, Luris is, it's only going to be useful, you know, maybe one in every 20 games or something like that. But the, the thing is, with the compa with a companion like Luris, it really isn't hurting you that much to not be able to put the expensive cards in your deck, and the fact that it's costing one sideboard slot really that that is almost f completely free. So if you think about it, like if this is a, if the difference between having Lurus and not having Lurus is like you win one extra game in like forty, it's probably worth it. I might want to think about what's left in my deck. I think I just want to get the spell pierce. So if I take the psychic frog, then I can go thought seize spell pierce. Boss is Oracle. I didn't even cast the Veil of Summer. Yes. Doesn't that work? Yeah, they could have cast Veil of Summer. I would have just spell pierced it to force them to tap on their mana. Yes, and it's not good enough. Like this hand. Well, I look at okay. I think I'm going to ditch the brainstorm. The only danger here is if I wind up with too many lands in my hand. Um, but I don't really want to ditch the Thassa's Oracle. I don't want to ditch my only two mana counter. I also don't want to ditch Archmage's Tarm. So it's like 
Do I want to ditch my third land or the Brainstorm? Well, starting out by drawing a fourth land isn't great. It's not the worst, though. Because I can potentially use this as a spell. It's nice to use my counters in spots where they don't have a spare green mana. I guess I could just go for the win here, but if they have like Mystical Dispute or Spell Pierce, it would be bad. And I think I can afford to play slower and be able to mana drain one piece of interaction. I don't think they haven't got priority there, so they might just have a handful of Atroxes and Omnisciences again. Can we cast mana drain? I definitely could have just had it an island instead of the snow covered swamp and I'd be in much better shape. Access to turn one spell snare really isn't that exciting, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the Undercity sewers out of my deck. Obviously, were I on the draw, having access to turn one spell snare would be great, but on the play, there's not a lot that can be done that really makes you wish you had spell snare. I guess somebody could like dark ritual then play a two mana card, but. It doesn't appear to be what's happening in this game. That seems pretty good. What's this matchup again? I guess I'm just taking a show and tell. Ultimately, I could have taken the Brainstorm, but I think I'm not going to be winning quickly enough that it isn't worth uh, trying to potentially like just plan to counter the second. Show and tell. I like that they didn't just go for it. There is the benefit that had I taken the Brainstorm, 
and I just left them with show and tell, show and tell omniscience. They could have gotten the omniscience into play, and maybe they have nothing to do with it. But they do have a couple of draw steps. Masters and Soul Gun Lantern are not particularly strong. I think I'm going to actually go for the one card. They got me good. Sort of. Would much rather have the Treasure Cruise than a Takanuma Abandoned Mire. spell pairs in my deck, so I don't think this does anything. But let's find out. Need cut down or fatal push. What else did I have in my deck last time? I guess I left the soul gun lantern in. Those all seem pretty bad. I'm really disappointed I haven't had the game yet where they play chill and tell and it allowed me to just do the Tainted Pact Thassa's Oracle combo for two mana. So I'm going to thought to use them off the swamp and then probably use Flooded Strand to get Undercity Sewers and cling to dust my own Flooded Strand because I want the Drown and the Lock to be able to counter three mana cards. They mold the five and I'm thought seizing them, so that's good for me.
I don't have Grim Tutor in my deck. I, I don't think this is a very good card if you're planning to spend mana to cast it. Like, obviously their deck can just do it for free sometimes with omniscience. I'm sure they have Demonic Tutor in their deck as well. Or if they don't, I think they've made an error in deck construction. They've gone top, top. They went top twice with that card. That was a good one. It's a little bit of a telegraphing that I've drawn in the lock in my hand if my opponent knows what's going on, but... It's just not worth making it so the draw and the lock can't counter a show and tell. And also, I don't know, it, the card pool's so big, they may not even realize that the reason I did that was drown in the lock. They might think that I just hate having Flooded Strand in my graveyard so much that I've designed the perfect deck to prevent it from being in my graveyard. So last time they tricked me pretty good with this. This is a tricky opponent. If they were truly incredibly tricky, they would get me with a 4-0 here. Snapcaster leads to a win with a Tainted Pact over a bunch of turns. This, seems, this pile seems like it's probably good enough. Are they trying to trick me? Somewhat. going to draw two with this and then on their turn I'm going to play a land and I'm going to snap thought seize them I'm very concerned that they have Veil of Summer in their hand right now fetchable land. They did not have Veil of Summer in their hand. Their hand is terrible. Why do they have Karn's Temporal Sundering in their deck? I guess I got a good card. So I wasn't robbed, but I thought their hand was going to be better than it was. They must have just Grim Tutored for the show and tell, I guess. It's kind of a mystery what's going on over there. this back this game I don't think. I think the game's gonna last long enough for that to matter. He 
He can run out of fetchable lands pretty quickly with this deck, and that is what is happening this game. I don't think I'm going to need him, though. I'd be really curious as to what logic led this card to being in their deck. It's like a card that's good if you have Omniscience and Atraxa in play. And aren't otherwise able to win. I think I'm going to be censoring an approach at the second sun here. I think it's worth doing. It is actually, like, somewhat marginal. They're not, it's even worth doing. Oh. And I didn't have an, an untapped land. They're not going for it. Because countering the first one... It doesn't mean that the second one doesn't kill you. It just gets the. It just means it's not in their deck to go and tutor for again. And we now know that they have multiples in their deck, which means really makes it seem like it wouldn't be worth countering. The first one. I can save my sensor to hidden Atraxa. Go for it. You know you want to play Atraxa. So this does... The one thing this does do is it just... It probably extends the game by three or four turns as well. So I am going to counter it. Also, I do sort of have more counters in my hand than it may seem. Just because I can Tainted Pact to get... I think Counter Spell is still left in my deck. This is Memory Lapse. Those wouldn't be guaranteed because I do have two Thassa's Oracles in my deck right now. Oh, I could have won on my turn. I miscounted my mana. I could have... Teachings for... Oh, no, I couldn't have, because I could have Teachings for Tainted Pact and then had Pact Pact and not enough mana to play the Oracle. So I didn't screw that up. I will be Teachings for Pact and then Pacting for Oracle. Just a second. I wonder if this person does not dig through time in their deck. The guy right before them did. Pretty big mistake to have opt in your deck over consider if you're playing with Dig Through Time. Then I'm going to go get a Thassa's Oracle, and then I'm, there's no reason to tap out here for this Tainted Pact. I'll be able to play Tainted Pact on my turn and protect it with all of my various counters. I think they can still get a land. Let's find out. Ray.
guess that's pretty good. Gives me some redundancy to win. Does mean that if I, they can get either of these permanents off the board. Comes non-lethal. I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded. I'm probably going to want both of these to become lands. So I'll do this one first and then I can wait. With the Lorian revealed a little bit. definitely have to either play this or play Dark Slick Shores and just uh, use the Lorian Revealed to go and get a land on turn one. I think now I'm just going to go and get a Watery Grave. This is a matchup where my life total does not matter at all, as far as I can tell. So you really want to get Watery Grave here rather than going and getting Island, because it means that Fabled Passage and Prismatic Vista stay live to get blue sources. Um, I guess this is making like my Bloodstained Mire and Marsh Flats a little bit worse that I just went and did that, but I think it's still worth it. And this is a matchup at where you really you just want like one black mana in play and you can do everything you need to do. You want a lot of blue mana in play because you want to be able to cast multiple counters in a turn as the game goes on. a little bit risky like if they have show and tell omniscience I can just taint impact in response and then they'll die to the show and tell like well the show and tell will put the Thassa's Oracle into play So that they wouldn't be able to do stuff at instant speed, potential in response, but there isn't a lot they could do. Uh, is there much they could do here? I don't think so. And if they have a counter, they could counter this, but I can just, I can untap and play Thassa's Oracle plus Fluster Storm. Maybe I should have just played, just untapped and done everything with five mana and Fluster Storm back up. Seems like it's not going to matter. I 
doing it this way, it does have the upside that if I find a good card in the bottom, like three or four cards in my deck, I can incorporate that into my plan. This does have the downside, though, that I could misclick and kill myself. If I dig too deep. It's really nice that Thought Scour is not a legal card on arena because you can do that to your opponent which would make it a lot scarier to go for the wins uh, so I have to take this one just what I always wanted a vexing ball ball This in the land. It's marginal. I feel pretty good about this hand now. I didn't know what my opponent was playing, but... Like, e even though I kept a one land hand, I'm actually... Like, this treasure cruise is going to get turned live pretty quickly. The fact that I got a matchup where the, the dismember and the... Uh, Stern Skull thing both do something is pretty nice. And I got to strand a useless card in my opponent's hand, which I like that. I like useless cards. I do need to find a land now. I did it! Hooray! I definitely want to dismember this in response because it seems likely that they're getting a land to uh, drain me. Still get to exile a land from my graveyard, but that's not as bad as it could have been. Sense of that. I feel robbed.
Loris doesn't really do very much because I know that they have this. Uh, what's it called? Blood Chief's Thirst in their hand. I mean, I'll, I'll put it in my hand, but pretty useless. I guess I can cast it in a spot where I'm going to force them to spend four on their next turn to do something about it. It's a weird inclusion in their deck. I'm also almost to the point where I could play it and then save it with Odawara and draw one more land. I don't know if I really want to do that though. I think I should actually save this fetch land in case I draw Brainstorm. I think the biggest, the best use for the lures, is, honestly, if I can Brainstorm, I can just Brainstorm it into my deck. I'd be very surprised if their deck can do anything about this. I guess they have the Reckless Impulse on their deck because they wanted some sort of card advantage card and they didn't want it to trigger I guess Bowmasters but couldn't they just play Questing Druid? Maybe they have Questing Druid in their deck as well we'll find out I don't know why I have Aether Gust on my sideboard I just think it's a good card I don't think it's going to be good in this matchup. Go cut the bobble. Go cut memory lapse. I don't like memory lapse so much against Luris decks, especially like gr Luris decks where the games are going to be grindy. Because you wind up. You, memory lapse is a good card when you're trading up on mana. Um. And, or if the game is just about, like, trying to win on turn four. If you're going to play a long grindy game, it really isn't that good of a card. Like, a long grindy game where your opponent has a lot of cheap cards, it's, that's not, memory lapse is time to shine. Uh, what else don't I want? Maybe I'll just cut an hop. Against an unknown opponent, I, I wouldn't have Path of Peril in my deck, but this would probably be a mulligan on the draw. Against this opponent where their deck just seems to be like small creatures. And some black disruption, I don't think you want to mulligan a hand like this. Go get Undercity Sewers with this one. And then I'll probably play this land and have the option of getting Watery Grave to play Counterspell. I want... Ooh. Okay.
So maybe they had Reckless Impulse on their deck because they wanted in more instants for Nether Goyf. Does that make sense? I suppose. I don't think anything can go wrong where this thing gets more toughness in response. You have to have like an artifact that could flash in. That would then go to the graveyard. That doesn't seem very likely. I uh, like seeing that. I'm making a list of things I like. This Orcish Bowmaster is not going to be anywhere on it. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to impulse try to find an untapped land and then just demonic to for damnation. I'd be dead to lightning bolt. Want to like a demonic tutor for just half of the combo and hope to draw the other half. That doesn't seem like a winning plan, but this doesn't seem like a winning plan either. This nether ghost really gave me the business. Although it's also the, like, the Bowmasters flashing in. That sh made it so that I had to play my hand out really awkwardly. Don't like that. So I'm dead to another Bowmaster or a Lightning Bolt. So there's probably six cards left in the deck that just kill me immediately. And I also lose to any discard. Alright, that? Something that maybe I can eat. This is something that maybe I can beat too. Like, do they really? Have another type that could hit? Also, they just milled a card that would kill me. I think I'm still gonna lose, but this has been like the best possible turn of events that could ever occur for me. They can bring back the Nether Goyf, and that's going to be lethal for me. But if that's their best play, I do have things that can interact with that. Ooh. All right. Let's see. This is tricky. Gain control of that. Die to an un to any land because of Luris plus Bowmasters. I can brainstorm, and if I hit like land plus a Tainted Pact, I win. If I had a blue land, I think I should brainstorm. Because if I hit a blue land, I can still do the Archmage's Charm. If I hit a single black, rem like a removal spell that I can cast, I can just kill the Death Ray Charm and counter the Luris. If I hit Tainted Pack plus a land, I win. I hit a bunch of stuff that doesn't help me at all. So now I need... Oh, wait. Now I killed myself. Because I need two cards off the Sarn's Ransom, and they just need to split them. I didn't really kill myself. I just couldn't win from that spot. 
Another one lander. I'm gonna play either Stern Sculpting or Brainstorm here. Brainstorm is a little bit risky because if I don't find another one, if I could brainstorm lock myself here, which would make me sad. Can I break the Inquisition? No. They're gonna take the thoughtsies. I'm I'm giving them the thoughtsies is I just as not I just as soon not lose two life. I definitely want to keep this like I, I want to draw the Stern's Cold Ding and I want to get the cast it. That's good. hand. <laughs> Are they going to just disrupt or flirt impulse? That'd be kind of crazy. Like cling to dust there and then dealt it to, to pay for the dig through time, but I think I like having cling to dust in my graveyard in this matchup, so I think I didn't want to do that. Please take Demonic Tutor. That was probably the right choice for them, but it would also, when I'm like land shy and not close to winning, Demonic Tutor is probably a card that's just going to sit in my hand not getting cast, so I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to let this thing hit much me for four, so I'm just going to play this now. Sensor's going to be bad because they have fourth land. Snap Tutor for Damnation. That's pretty good for me. Just try to buy time.
Think an M cling to dust. Same attack. Okay. Be that way, opponent. Disruptor Flute's kind of doing something. Wait, why didn't they cast their Thoughtseize? They wanted to wait a turn? I guess that makes some amount of sense. I think they have to take Tainted Pact here. Effect in the yard, and then I would go to five. So I'm probably going to be at five or six here, and I think they can't cast the Luris. So I'll get to go Memory Deluge and then get an Underground Sewers. Now oh, they like their top card. I do not like that. That solves my problems. At least my short term problems. Thought it was a little bit risky. I, I could have let the nether goy hit me one more time and then just tried to win with the tainted pack that I just found. Problem is if they left lightning bolt on top of their deck it goes really badly for me. Can this get a land? I think I still have basic island left in my deck. I do. I'd like to make a land drop this turn. This cannot get a land. Alright, I'm, I'm just going to try to fade Lightning Bolt now. So this is an unknown card they're drawing. If I play Damnation, then they just play Loris plus something the next turn, and I'm kind of right back in the same spot. Final round. I'll just go get Undercity Sewers, turn one. I kind of 
of like it when people play this Land Line of Sanctity card. It means that they're probably playing the Show and Tell deck, which I enjoy playing against. Really want this would be like a fourth land because of the Lorien reveal. Probably I can do better. I think I'm going to use Lorien Reveal to get Watery Grave and then cast Consider. It would be sad if I played Consider here and I actually saw Watery Grave and had to put it in my graveyard. Definitely don't want that one. That's a pretty good one. be nice to get away with not having to play this as a land. It is a little bit risky that I didn't play it this turn because it means I'm not going to have access to double counter next turn. Although, I think the way that their deck works, there isn't really a reason I'm going to need double counter on turn four. Maybe, maybe if they have spell pierce in their deck, I'll be sad that I don't have double counter on turn four. I think their decks also just has so many of these lands in it that they may have struggled to just have four untapped mana on turn four. Ooh, impulse. Do I want Drown in the Lock or do I just want Prismatic Vista? I think I just want Prismatic Vista. I'll get some intel on myself here because I can crack the vista before or after the draw. So let's see if it's going to be a good card. Show me something good or show me something bad. And then I'll use the prismatic vista. Thassa's Oracle counts as something good. So I theoretically have a win on my next turn because I can go into their turn, Waterlog's Teaching for Tain Impact, untap Oracle plus Tain Impact. But in order for me to do that, they have to play something I don't need to counter. Um, so I have enough mana to be able to afford to do it, but I also probably don't want to do it into their untapped mana. So probably it's not going to happen. I will go and get the Tainted Pact, though. There's no reason not to do that. Alright. I guess from their perspective, it makes sense to do that while I'm tapped out, because they, if their hand's bad, they just need this to resolve to any, have any chance to win, but they are making it so that I'm going to kill them now, rather than uh, potentially just letting them live with a bunch of mana untapped. I'm surprised how much I've gotten paired against this show and tell deck. I don't play Timeless all that often. I never really thought this was one of the better decks, or at least it hasn't been one of the better decks in a while. 
Maybe right when it first when they first printed show and tell. The other decks needed some stuff to catch up to it, but it doesn't seem like it's gotten any better with any of the newer cards that have been added. I'm mourning for this matchup again. I think that's all there is to it. I am inside boarding in a way that, like, if they manage to get an Atraxa into play, I'm just going to lose. But I think that it's not worth having cards in my deck like Shieldred's Edict or something that could kill an Atraxa once it gets into play. Because you're probably just going to lose to whatever the Atraxa was able to find. Sand is on the weaker side of keepable hands, I would say. I want to be able to cast Spell Snare. It's not a Veil of Summer. Oh, that didn't work out very well. As always, I'm not really sad to see Demonic Tutor be taken out of my hand because this is one. This is certainly a game where I was, it was just going to be stuck in my hand for a while because I don't think I'd be spending mana on it anytime soon. And they're up to three cards in their yard, four cards in their yard now actually. So the Drown and the Lock can hit. Uh, what's it called? Show and tell. So I have a little bit of defense. Obviously, if they have show and tell plus Veil of Summer plus something to put into play, I'm going to lose. And it looks like what's about to happen. It's possible that they're just doing this because they have a second show and tell in their hand. And they don't have Veil of Summer here, and so I'm going to have another turn to maybe draw an untapped blue for Archmage's Charm. That'll work. I definitely will happily seek new knowledge away this spell snare. It's not that great when they know about it.
think it's better to resolve seeking knowledge than spell snare. Or than ops, rather. Don't use like a thought seize type effect here. How do I keep getting away with it? Hopefully they don't have multiple things to show and tell and to play. I wish I had that spell snare over that opt, huh? This doesn't seem to be going great. Backup omniscience. This seems like I'm going to lose to it. If it's approach of the second sun, they can just play. Second attracts it'll win. This is certainly on the weaker end of hands. But it's a land and spells hand with some interaction and half of what I need to win. Certainly I would not have been doing better had I mulliganed. This is nice, because I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put this Loris in my hand, and they're going to go for show and tell. And if they have Omniscience... Doesn't work. Here's if they don't have Omniscience. And they put a Trax into play, then I'm going to lose.
And the crowd goes wild. That worked out well. I think I can win now just by tutoring out the counter next turn. Like, the, the only scary thing they could do here is they could show and tell in an Atraxa. It just seems like that's what's happening, sadly. I guess I could tutor for Drown in the Lock, maybe? I've exiled too many cards from their yard. It doesn't work. It's unfortunate that they had a second show and tell there. They're still in pretty bad shape, though, because they probably don't have any cards in their deck that get Luris off the battlefield. Which means that the uh, Tandy Pact might be about to kill them. They might have, like, some bounce kind of cards. Mastermind's Acquisition. Okay, that's probably not going to save them. Yeah. Does this count as a game where Loris won me the game? Actually, it sort of does, because the Lurus is getting me the Thassa's Oracle. So it definitely won me the game. Hopefully there'll be like a duress in my bottom cards and I'll get to see. I want to know. Psychic Frog really didn't do anything. I think Crescent Grip was what they tutored for. 
Nice. Well, that was a cool way to end it. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that. I haven't been making many videos because there haven't been really... I don't know, I haven't really been feeling any of the constructed formats in Arena. Maybe that'll change when the Pioneers comes to Arena. Subscribe if you want to find out what happens. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.